Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are loaded into the game. We just loaded into the game. We're just making sure all the knobs and levels and everything is here, ready to go. I got Blaze here by my side. He's our head admin, making sure that everything is ready for our very first match. So I do apologize if we do have a slightly slow start. So get yourself rolled out of that bed if you're coming from the States. If you're in the great state of Europe, you're getting ready for some good old evening Dota action here, and we're ready to bring it to you. So just allow us another minute or so, and we will begin the action. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. The Dota season is starting. It is upon us, and we are getting ready to dive into our very first Dota game here for the BTS series. And I'm hoping to God we're not coming in too loud, too quiet, too hot, too cold. We are try our best to make sure we make all the proper adjustments. We're shaking off the rust here at Beyond the Summit because we're getting ready, pumped up for some more Dota action. I'm Kyle Guy, of course, and I'm going to be joined by the one and only Blaze Casting. Blaze, thanks for coming out and joining me this fine and early morning. I'm sure you're very, very excited as we begin the new day of Dota. Absolutely. It's been a heck of a week trying to get this all prepared. Every team kind of scrambling together last minute for their own schedules. But everybody wants to get back into it. Everybody's hungry for some Dota. TS6 was incredible, but a new season is here. And yeah, everybody wants to be top dog going into the next major. So a great opportunity for the teams to get some good practice and mm -hmm. shake off some rust as much as we are yeah. here in the studio. And yeah, just see uh, some brand new Dota. So Team Empire here, obviously, with a little bit of a, a roster shakeup. Well, Blaze, I, I don't mean to yeah. step on your toes, but you know... I know there's a draft underway, but people are just strolling in here. They're like, okay, it's Dota time. What am I watching? What are we looking at right now? Mm -hmm. So in your head admin, right, of this BTS Europe series, we have plans for more series, but uh, why don't you give us a, B, a bit of a TLDR as far as what to expect with this, maybe what the format is, and uh, what we should be looking forward to. All right, so it's pretty cool because of the fact that we get to see so many different matchups in this variation of the BTS series. Before, it was like single elimination. Maybe your favorite team gets knocked yeah. out round one. They play one matchup. Here, you're, it's a small group stage for groups of four teams so everybody's going to play at least these three best of twos or two game series and then based on their wins there they'll maybe need a tiebreaker and the top dog of each group will be going to a playoff bracket on saturday so very quick very easy goes uh, week by week we can do maybe one of these a week uh every once in a while and it's just really easy for the teams to schedule around and, and gives an opportunity for them to practice against teams of varying skill level. And we get to see them in so many different competitive environments. So you have a favorite team in this bracket. Well, you're not going to see them knocked out round one. You're going to be seeing them go at least the three best of twos. And if they're good enough, they're going to be going into the playoffs as well. So uh, it's just a, a $5,000 prize pool, not too shabby. And it should be pretty fun to see all these teams just come to life yeah. here in this arena. It's a good opportunity for obviously a lot of the tier two, tier three talented be able to get back into the spotlight, be able to start grinding away so that when they hopefully move forward and qualify for the bigger lands, they have that upper edge advantage against some of the bigger teams who didn't quite get enough of the early experience in the early part of the meta here. We'll make sure we have Dota unmuted <laughs> as we go on through. People, the rest will be there, all right? It's going to be happening. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and get into the action here. As mentioned, we have Team Empire versus the Brood Mothers here for opening one. Uh, for some people, they probably don't know too much about who the Broodmothers are. Another team who's looking to kind of break through and make a name for themselves. Empire, a prestigious Dota name in itself we've been seeing for a long time. But obviously, you know, Blaze, we've had a very serious roster sw uh, swap happening here between pretty much all regions. So it's going to be a, a new period for everybody here. A lot of people just trying to find their own new bit of 
you know, in, internal chemistry, uh, what works for them. Uh, the fortunate thing is that pretty much this Dota patch has been pretty damn good. It's been a mutual decision. Uh, by the way, guys, we've heard about the uh, the clipping of the mic. Uh, Blizz is, uh, Blaze is on it right now, and we're, we're going to make adjustments as we go, so we do appreciate your feedback. But because this Dota patch, well, to be honest, has been so damn swell, and, and the meta is filled pretty damn solid, there hasn't been too many adjustments since TI6, so we're expecting a lot of those power picks to still be their blaze. And we see Empire open up with what had been a favorite, especially for teams like Wings, who did obviously win TI, and going with the early snag of the Oracle. They pair it with the Sand King, and on the other side we got the Broodmothers here picking up Kunkka, which seriously made waves, no pun intended, through TI, and, you know, I guess we have to give some credit to Lanham for that one, man. He really oh, yeah. showed the potential of the support Kunkka there. Yeah, and it kind of also forked the path a little bit for our support Kunkka builds. It essentially made it so you can go the Lanham build or you can go the classic build. You can go for the Tidebringer that gets a little bit skilled up a little bit earlier, maybe an armlet, and go for some more physical damage output. Or you can go for the classic Torrent uh, X mark. I've been seeing some pros still go ec of the Ether Lens on Kunkka and the Blink Dagger and things to kind of add utility. So you can go for some extra damage in your fights. You can bring more utility. You kind of have multiple paths to take now. So I think this hero d brings a lot to the table. But to be frank, I've played a lot of Pub Dota over the past couple of weeks, and I've seen a lot of bad Kunkas. So yeah. hopefully back here in the professional scene, we've got individuals that can hit their combos, uh, find their ganks, just really build momentum with a very powerful toolkit that Kunkka has with his spells. It's so powerful. It's not just like a hero you could just pick up and be like, oh yeah, I know how to play Kunkka. It's a support. He's good. I'll just pick it up and go. It, it has quite a bit of a skill cap with it. You have mm -hmm. to, I mean, you know, there's the given. You have to be able to land your torrents if you want those ideal setups, but you have to make sure you're using your boat at the appropriate time, whether it be defensive or, or offensive, and there's a lot of pressure there for the setup and having that kind of early game strong stance with the hero so you can kind of segue yourself into a, a comfortable mid-game and a position where this jug could really ball out of control. Moving forward, Empire, they snag up the Elder Titan here. He still makes his way uh, into the pool, uh, so when we look over kind of the bands here, do you think that Empire and Broodmothers kind of took things a bit lightly in the second phase, get, getting rid of something like the Slardar and the Alk fearing that heavy greed? Broodmothers fear the cheese of a Huskar and then the late game Morphling. It does seem a bit contrasting, but they let a powerhouse through like Elder Titan. Yeah, I think it's just the fact that this Oracle brings so much in terms of versatility and early game presence, and when he's combined with a couple of specific heroes, he's just beastly. So you're really afraid of the Huskar when there's an Oracle already on the field, and the Morphling as well. If you can just keep him at his, the health pool that he wants to be with a False Promise, he can just lay into your team. So very dangerous. Uh, in the end, they do band those out, but yeah, we do get a great combo in the Oracle ET as your support. So that does mean that Ghostic is going to be running an offlane Sand King primarily. He can mm -hmm. go into the jungle a little bit here and there, but it is going to be one of those heroes that is going to be right there on the front lines and probably dual laning with the ET just to at least get him the early level so the caustic can, can do its work and it doesn't get completely zoned out by the coddle. We'll have to see what Brumo's approach is going to be to that one. Their third pickup, and my very first game back, I'm treated by a keeper, a keeper <laughs> of the light. And everyone has been talking about how they really are starting to feel like this hero is just straight up a pain in the ass now, Blaze. Specifically to those off laners mm -hmm. who cry their way. And I just drink their delicious tears, Blaze. Mana Leak is a hell of a spell and it could be really annoying. And you know, the way he can kind of just dictate the pace of the game. You know, he's very good at kind of slamming down the brakes and, and trying to slow the roll of teams and allowing you know, any sort of late game potential to really shine. But is there anything else about the coddle here for Broodmothers that they might try to get at, you know, something special from it? Well, Obviously, like, you know they're going to be going for a right-click carry. They have the Oracle and the ET behind it. So the list last pick, and even the OD, uh, to an, in a sense, is very oriented around their auto attacks. So g with the Blinding Light, they're going to be able to team fight really well. Uh, with the Mana Leak, like you said, they're going to handle the SK in lane. And from there, they're just going to be able to kind of go later and later into the game because they can pick up one extra core hero. Like, yeah, Juggernaut uh, is a great carry position, but he can also play mid. This could mean that they could go greedier and actually pick up like a really hard carry in their safe lane and be able to make that work because when you're trying to push high ground against Coddle, against Kunkka, it gets pretty rough. But now we see this Omni Knight yeah. come out, and it's going to make things pretty interesting now. Uh, Oracle is actually favored, in my mind, against Omni Knight. The purge can be used multiple ways. You can use it on allies as well as enemies. Oh, yeah. Get rid of that repel. You can actually 
theoretically AOE dispel the Guardian Angel as well. So it's it's very powerful. But Omni is mostly here uh, to deal with the magical damage and pure damage output from the Sand King and the OD. As long as you can keep a Repel up for like at least half the fight, uh, whoever is going to be right clicking, whether the Juggernaut or another pickup from Brood Mothers, is going to be feeling pretty safe. Huge sustained pot potential now showing for Brood Mothers, obviously, especially later if the Coddle is able to pick up the Ags. There's going to be a lot of fuel here for Brood Mothers to continuously continue to add pressure to Empire. But yeah, that Omni Knight pick does become very interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see because a lot of people feel his his downfall is just his lack of laning stage. So he could be very, very fragile. In, in that, and I'm, I'm curious to see if Empire are going to look to punish it, or if Broodmothers are going to put a lot of emphasis behind it. An exciting hero with a fantastic beard, Blaze. I mean, I'm just excited <laughs> to see some Blade time there. And Empire, you know, pulling out the OD. He's felt much more like a niche pick, uh, but with already seeing the potential mid lane coming up from Empire, Broodmothers have that last pick to respond, and they're going to respond with Lady Templar Assassin. Yeah, should be pretty good. Uh, Outworld Devourer doesn't get to use that many arcane orbs in the laning phase. It's not until he gets his aura built up that he really gets to spam that out. So TA should have the mana pool she needs to uh, actually fight up against the OD, where this matchup used to be one of the worst matchups TA could have because all of the mana burn or intelligence steal was based around his astral imprisonment. Now it's the arcane orb, which costs a lot more, and obviously the aura takes longer to build up. So Kaiser should have an okay time here against the OD, and then when he gets a repel, he's just going to be able to go in. All he needs here is this Blink Dagger Desolator, and he should be able to start bringing the pain to Empire. But Empire, uh, while they have a rather teamfight-oriented first four, they're actually going to be going for the split push in their fifth. They realize there's not a lot of lockdown here uh, from the Broodmothers. Yeah, there's Mana Leak, there might be X Mark, those can be annoying. But end of the day, it seems like Aloha Dance is confident to play the AM. He loves those kind of grindy late game heroes. We've seen a lot of success uh, ever since he moved into that uh, one position uh, with heroes like the Jug. We've seen him occasionally pull out Life Stealer, Anti Mage, obviously a bit more disciplined and methodical, uh, being able to grind away the farm and be a presence in the late game. He could be a real nightmare. Uh, for a lot of these Broodmother pickups, the Keeper, the Omni Knight, and we'll just have to see how Broodmothers are going to be responding. Folks, it's time. We're going to be hopping into it now. Oh, my lord, hope this works. Okay, as we hop in, we are going to be leading off with a casual pause, as you do with most uh, online games and events. But uh, we'll just hope all of our configs are, are ready to go here, Blaze, as yeah. we get underway. Broodmother is going to be supporting up the Radiant side here. Already the early TP's coming out. Uh, we got Ill here on your Kunkka. Already looking to get down a bit of the extra vision game to kind of contest mm -hmm. this offlane. Yeah, and this is interesting. Using the smoke like this, where they actually smoke everybody in the fountain so that the two TPs here will not only get the wards out, but they won't be spotted in doing so. So it's going to be really hard to deward both of the wards that were just placed out, uh, whether on the, the bottom lane or blocking off that pull camp. So it does mean that Broodmothers are going to secure themselves uh, at least some good experience in each and every lane, uh, thanks to those early wards. And I think that bottom one is actually the more important one to stick, because that means that the Sand King is going to have to pretty much just go back to the jungle. Go stick. He can try to sustain, get level 2 or 3, but in general, that kind of vision is going to allow the Coddle to just run around the creep wave and continue to harass him back, zone him out, yeah. and make his life miserable. So, I, you know, I would have to say, you know, Sand King jungling, it's not the worst thing ever, but what kind of opportunities does that open up now for Broodmothers? Coddle would have been there being a pain in the ass in the lane, as we know, but now he has options to maybe move around. But it's a Coddle, Blaze. He can't move yeah. around and gank so much. So, I don't know, maybe you play greedy and go in the jungle and, and just try to get to that next item, that next phase a bit sooner. Do you think there's something that he should do with his time if, let's say, the Sand King does opt to go into the jungle? Because the... the Sanking is not starting Iron Talon right now. It does mean that the Mana Leak should be effective for a few levels. If he wants to, after one point in Mana Leak, start going into Illuminate Chakra and just farming and stacking and farming, I think that's fine. Um, also, he can move over to the Ancients and stack that up for the TA. Hell, he can go top lane and help out the Omni Knight, who's not the ideal off laner in my mind. He's great for the mid game, but in the laning phase, maybe he needs a little bit more like boots or Windlace to try to maneuver against his opposition. So I would say that Coddle has a few options here if he does have to do anything other than uh, harass back Ghostic, but at least from Ghostic's item build, it looks like not only is he finding the early Observer Ward, but it looks like he's going to be able to stick around for a bit. All right, but there it is. The early Mana Leak does begin, and Ghostic's going to have to kind of make sure he's either committed to hitting these creeps or will have to take the full bit of harassment right there. And as you can see, they waste really no time assaulting him. Focus goes right to the Slash game, and will try their best to make sure the Sand King is as miserable as possible 
in this off lane, but there it begins also the caustic finale, which can do serious work to any melee core, including the jug right here. And with the help of the Elder Titan, though, you know, they'll try their best to be able to keep their wits about them, and he'll try to zone back this coddle, but who really gets the better of this? Um, right now, I would say that the Juggernauts are going to be able to win out the lane pretty well, but I do think that the Omni is going to be pretty happy about it. The fact that Omni Kunkka gets to go top and only have to worry about an Oracle, not the Oracle ET combo, actually opens things up for the Omni as well. So, in general, both offlaners are going to get something out of this lane, but obviously, uh, we are going to see Broodmothers take the upper hand, at least in bottom. I don't think Empire are going to be too shaken up, though, if the laning phase doesn't go their way immediately. You know, you're always pocketing that AM... Mm -hmm and preparing for what could be potentially the late game. But I am also very curious to see what the other four plan on doing because they have been, as you mentioned in the draft, a very team fight synergetic kind of uh, foursome. And I'm curious to see how aggressive they plan on using that four as the mid game will begin to develop here. But let's touch base mid lane. OD versus TA, classic one-on-one. -on -one. Doesn't look like they're going to be having too much outside interference. So based on CS game, G's off to a hot start and we'll quickly grab up a DD run. Yep, so, I mean, I'm, this mid matchup is developing into just a 1v1 duel as the Kunkka is kind of stuck top and the ET is was stuck bottom. Now he's rotating top as he had to TP home. I, I do feel like we just get to see pretty much this battle of the Titans and mid Kaiser versus G, and it, it, they've been unmolested. They've been able to just kind of go for this full-on 1v1, and, and right now we do see the TA is slightly favored, but the OD's not far behind. He's gotten a lot of denies. G, as we know, is a, an all-star mid laner. He had been... Finding most of his huge success recently playing off Virtus Pro, but then they, you know, debunked that team, became a part of Friends, I believe, and then uh, since then found a new home here uh, with Empire and looking to kind of hit back into the spotlight. So we'll see if he's going to be looking to kind of bring a serious OD game here to kind of get the uh, early highlight reels going. Meanwhile, bottom lane, harassment comes onto Old Coddle himself. A oh, commitment to the stun. They need one more, and they got it. The finale is going to be blowing up. Caustic does its job. Ghost Chick, who we were suspecting was going to have a little bit of trouble possibly in the offlane, leads off with an early kill and the first blood for Empire. Yeah, the ET going bottom and just really creating space for the Sand King. He tanked up two mana leaks and then just TP'd home. So while it wasn't great for me post because early experience, he's only level two, uh, Sand King was able to get so much done and, and just go right up on the Coddle. The Coddle's fast, but you close the distance pretty well here with the early boots on Ghost Stick, and you're able to bring him down. This sand, this Coddle is, is going to have a hard time now. He d only has just one point in mana leak, one point in Chakram, so while he can... Uh, annoy the Ooh. Sand King if he's in a defensive position. Uh, it makes it very, very difficult for him to actually get any damage out against him. What a martyr. Miposhka taking all the harassment in the bottom lane and makes his presence here at the top, connecting with a nice two-man stun. And they're going to try to kind of sweep the rug under Broodmothers here in the top lane and the momentum they're trying to build up on the back of this Omni Knight Kunkka combo. Uh, but they're looking to make strides, both of them at about level three, but Ooh. we do see action bottom lane once again. Ghost Dick the Sand King able to crush the Keeper of the Light and a hot 2-0 start for him. This Sand King is starting to warm up. Yeah, a bit of a lucky haste rune for him, but still very, very nice movement and able to find the kill. Get really early arcane boots out, and yeah, this connecting not only here to stay, but here to dominate the lane. Uh, this Juggernaut just needs to kind of be closer to his keep of the light. He needs to be able to... Oh, top out. lane, they're looking to go. Can they get ill down? He gets a nice heal, but it's not going to be enough. They're able to burst him down with the help of that Oracle, and they'll get the job done. Empire, 3-0 start for them. Yeah, and we're just kind of seeing those skills individually as a player as well as oh, the coordination doing a relax. lot of Relax. Might need to relax here. He's feeling a bit anxious trying to get some hits on the AM, but he's stuck now with no mana. He will eat a lot of pot shots there, but we'll be able to make it back as Ill rotates in to help him out. Yeah, very close call there. The Oracle was only like 10 mana away from a one Purifying Flames, which would have sealed the deal, oh, uh, sure. bringing down the Omni Knight. But at least for now, he will survive, get that clarity out, which as long as it doesn't get broken, is going to be able to get him right back up to where he needs to be in the lane. In the meantime, though, the Sand King is going to kind of reset things, get full mana, full HP, and TP right back down. I think that Juggernaut has to be very cautious about this Ghost Stick, who's starting to dominate the map. Yeah, you got Ghost Stick, who is starting to hit a serious stride here in the bottom lane. G continues to win the CS game here on his OD. 30-19 to TA's 27-3, Blaze. 
TA, who, as we know, is mostly good in the deny department, this OD is putting on a clinic, though. Yeah, they really need to focus on the Ancients now. Obviously, you already see Empire putting out an Observer Ward on the high ground near the Ancients, but I do think that even despite that vision, Broodmothers need to prioritize stacking that and then protect it when they have Kunkka's ship. That seems like the best way for them to kind of get back in the economy game with how these lanes have started to develop. It's almost feeling like... You know, Empire do kind of dictate where things are going for all three lanes. And once these level sixes start coming together, mm. we'll have to see... Overextension by Broodmothers up top. This could yeah. be really bad for here them. they sweep in from behind. They're looking to put it all together here. AM needs a little bit more time if he wanted to get that level six big mana void happening. But they're looking to make a move for the Omni. They blast him down, purifying flames. But here comes G. Sets up the trap to look to finish him off. And they want more. They're looking to jump in for Ill. Can they get it? Body blocks are there. Purifying flames. They need a bit more. And they got him. The pirate goes down. And Empire... Empire pull ahead now 5-0, to zero, making a good emphatic start for themselves in the beginning of this BTS series. Yeah, they made a little, they just big misstep actually. I, I want to just understate it, but it really Broodmothers went way too far. They brought the Anti-Mage below half HP, good harass to kind of keep him scared, but he's got a ring of health. He's going to bring that right back up, and they didn't realize that the OD was missing. So not only would they have guaranteed lost one hero, hero just through the Oracle OD, uh, ET, on the Omni? flank, the OD just gets to do that much more. Bottom lane focus. Able to kind of zone back Ghost Chick a bit, but the elusive Sand King is never easy to just straight up Omni into. We got a potential Sandstorm burrow away. And uh, no easy opportunity has really been given to Broodmothers, but you can feel it. The way they're overextending, they're feeling a bit anxious here. They know the game, at least the early game, is for sure slipping away from their fingers. And they do not want to allow Empire to skate into this mid-game feeling so good and so confident here. I mean, you already have an AM game on your side, for God's sakes, Blaze. You have to have something coming your way for Broodmother. Yeah, absolutely. But right now, Aloha Dance already has a Vanguard up for himself. Doesn't go too greedy, go for the Battle Fury Rush. He was contested in the lane, but even though his CS isn't pitch perfect, like the Vanguard is going to make it so that he can guarantee his Battle Fury at a really good timing, because there's no way they can legitimately gank him with like f even two or three heroes. They have to bring like the whole enchilada if they're going to be able to and knock him down, take him down a peg, and prevent that Battle Fury from coming out. The Vanguard just makes him too beefy. I don't know if they have enough ammunition to be able to put that kind of focus onto the AM at this moment. They still have some reinforcements here about the bottom lane. Keeper continues to kind of hang out on the side. I almost want to say lollygag, but, you know, he's just holding a TP scroll. But now they're going to look to make their move potentially. They have focus out in front, but a swing and a miss on a torrent... And with Sand King pulling off here and having some assistance nearby, there's no chance for Broodmothers to kind of move forward with any sort of action. Instead, Focus is going to get knocked down. Beautiful stun in there from Ghost Chick. And now Elder Titan strides on in, looking to go. It is going to be a step in from the Coddle with the Mana Lake to slow them down. Oh, but they're... Stop! Ah, oh, they got him! Ill right under the tower, going to get hit up. Ghost took a hell of a game already by him on this sand king. Yeah, but in the mid lane here, the G is barely able to survive. That uses the double damage rune, gets healed up by King R, and looking to turn it here onto Kaiser. Going to be pretty difficult. He's going to get the repel after the Oracle gets out the for Fortune's End, so that's going to be a perfectly fine TA, but I brought G down to just 100 HP, and King R comes in to save the day. They knock the TA back a little bit, but can't help but feel it continues to be a bit demoralizing here if your broodmother's still reaching to try to get your first bit of blood on your side and they're trying he blocks a lot of that blast damage with the help of the fates edict now get some assistance from g but it might not be enough will they finally get someone down they certainly do and it's little support oracle who's going to have to take the blow well yeah things might be a little demoralizing for broodmothers but as we've learned from sir action slacks obnite brings a positive mental attitude to the game <laughs> they make it happen they get the yeah. kill and uh, yeah, they're going to start trying to take the map back. They need to start suppressing this AM. They need to start getting control of their Ancients, and uh, you will see that stacked up by Ill now. So I think they're going to be able to kind of get their feet back underneath them, but uh, by then we're going to see Empire having a Blink Dagger on Sand King. Obviously the OD is going to be able to build up a very large pool of items that dish out massive damage, and we haven't even seen the Saiyan's Eclipse come out yet. Bottom lane... A little bit of a spin game here from Focus, but then E.T. shows himself, and suddenly he's surrounded by three, and he goes down. Ghost Jake once again, mega kill by him. Does he make another setup play? 
This is what we felt leading into the game was going to be Broodmother's potentially best lane setup against the Sand King, and it's turned into their worst enemy right now. Yeah, he just was able to overwhelm the Keeper of the Light. It seems like he wasn't too experienced playing uh, against a really aggressive offlane Sand King, especially with the ET backing him up. And yeah, they just didn't kind of bring enough uh, to support. I really felt like the Kunkka could have played more actively on the bottom lane, where he kind of helped the Omni a little bit in the top lane. He could have really punished the Sand King's aggression. Oh. Like, can you imagine just even one or two torrents bottom when this SK was right up in the Coddle's face? That would have been a kill the other way every time. But Ill wasn't there, and uh, the Coddle suffers for it. Now Ghost Stick on a tear. And they want that bounty, does Broodmothers here. They have this mid lane totally surrounded, but Ghost Stick is in a nice defensive position, and now the Elder Titan... Will showed up. Miposhka moves right in for the Coddle. Sits out the blast, but it's only going to be a bit of a feeler here as they do make their finish dead zoning in. Onto that Tier 1. It does go down, and now they segue over. You know, we got Focus. It's itchy to use this Omni Slash. It's still only the level 1 Omni Slash, but it has yet to really get his sword dirty in this game. Yeah, 0-2-0, zero, and zero, not the score you're looking for in this case. And you know that the Anti-Mage is probably going to go with like a flawless KDA for the next 20 minutes just because of the item build that he went for, the Magic Wand, the Treads, the Vanguard. So while there's two deaths already on Broodmother's carry, Aloha Dance is just going to keep doing his thing. It's very unlikely yeah. that he goes down. And you're, you're thinking about, okay, AM now, we got to consider acknowledging him, but you have G also on the other side of his OD doing his own game. I think there's just going to be so much for Broodmothers to try to keep tabs on at this point. You can't help but feel like with the lineup they put together, they were hoping to get the momentum, you know, on their side right from the landing phase moving forward. And any moment where Empire were kind of able to slip ahead is definitely a bit of a deficit for Broodmothers here, and it's not going to get any easier. Empire have now smoked up. They're on the prowl here, Blaze. They got level 6s ready to go. This could be dangerous. Yeah, I expected them to do this when the Ghost Egg picked up the Blink Dagger, but it looks like they're going to do it a little early. Aloha Dance actually almost tests that theory of durability, but just narrowly survives it with the Wand and the Treads, and uh, they're still going to go bottom. Yeah, they did send one top, but look to potentially make the rest of their movement here in the bottom lane. Uh-oh, Focus could get bursted down. King R steps oh. in trying to snipe him, but it's not going to be enough. Purifying Flames at the end could end up saving him. He jumps right back out from the trees to avoid the Earth Splitter, and now Empire have to get the hell back. Broodmothers would love to be able to capitalize on that situation, but it looks like they're going to be a bit too slippery. Yeah, I was going to talk about the fact that the ET's aura was almost in range from that spirit, but I just looked at the skill build, and ET actually isn't skilling natural order at all. Oh. Usually you go for at least one point for the value here, like it's twice as effective at least in the armor department. But uh, yeah, he's going for the 3-2 uh, zero build. So Classic. What, what this allows you to do is really turtle well. Like you can clear out the creep waves and stomp them and you can uh, bring them down to like one hit from death every time. So you can keep towers alive for a real long time with this build, but it's not amping up the damage as much. So that means that it's going to be harder to, to find those quick burst kills uh, mm -hmm. that on Heroes Omni Knight is protecting. Speaking of burst kills, they burst him down. He tries to get off the heel, but there's already a Purifying Flames waiting in the back pocket there. A little Oracle and Empire pull ahead now 9-1 to one with a good bursting play there. Anti-Mage goes right back into his rotational farm here back at the top lane, only being kind of mirrored by focus on that front. But again, you still have Mr. OD continuing to kind of bulk up himself. Now... Got to give credit to Broodmothers here. Their TA still holds highest net worth here, but you know, with the TA blaze, I'm expecting to see her take some take some names, take some heads. We need yeah. to see her potential really get unleashed. Still sporting that 1-0 and watching the mid lane tower in a bit of trouble. We'll have to see when she's going to be able to make a strike. Yeah, and I hate to keep going back to it, but the fact that she hasn't taken a single, she's only taken one set of Ancients throughout this entire game, really makes it difficult for her to get into it. Her economy is so far behind right now, and despite being oh, top net worth, now she's very vulnerable when this Repel ends. I feel like she's getting kind of dragged into a bad situation here. She's got the confidence of that Repel, but then trouble comes in in the form of a Sand King! Epicenter flies, the Ghost Ship does come out, but it's not going to be enough to save him. Broodmothers could be crumbling here. Ghost Ship gets a nice little save with a False Promise, but the Omni Slash will also be there. And look at this, even a Guardian Angel comes out. No way Ghost Chick lives from that one. He will go down, but they do have to sweat for it. It only ends up being a one-for-one -one split for now, but King R could be the next victim. They get him. Nice little torn connection. Stops him from making any sort of hasty escape. And Broodmothers will string together another one, making it 3-10. to ten. All the meanwhile, though, Blaze, gotta remember, we got Aloha Dance dancing away the farm on this AM as he gets that Tier 1 tower. Yeah, so just cleaning up. G and Lohadens realize that the fight is a loss, immediately go up top and take the top 
tier one. That makes it an EVA trade. Losing the two supports, but getting the tower out of it. Uh, some would argue by those metrics, Empire is even favored out of that engagement. But uh, that's just kind of the, the cost of having an anti-mage in the game, is you're going to have to fight four versus five. In this case, they do lose on the exchange, but they still pick up the TA, and you see her net worth drops from the first position to the third. We're going to see this anti-mage and this OD do amazing work throughout this game, and OD almost has his dragon lance. Now, this item has so much potential in a game like this. You see the TA jump on you, you push her back with the hurricane pike, and you're going to be able to just lay into her. The arcane orb, all, your entire job as OD is just stacking up that arcane orb as quickly as possible. So getting some attack speed, getting some good range with this dragon lance, and with a hurricane pike, that's all he's going to need from there. Uh, Empire have the heroes to keep the space, to essentially let them play the sniper game because they've got the in-your-face heroes like the Sand King, like the ET, and they're going to take the fight to Broodmothers. And we'll have to see if Broodmothers are going to be prepared. I mean, again, they put together a lineup that was hoping to kind of build up some momentum from the early portion of this game. A, a good fallback, I guess, in having something like a Coddle is your high ground defense and your, and your out spam to keep the pressure away from your side is, is great. Who are they going to be funneling all that late game potential onto? I mean, you have a Jug and a TA, and I can't help but feel like that pales a bit in comparison when you have a, a bulking up OD and AM on the other side. But maybe there's potential here for Broodmothers if they have to opt into a station where they stall out. But you could tell already, they smoke up, they go on the move, they're hoping to just continue to bring momentum their way. They can't accept these little skirmishes where they happen to win as far as kills, but then they end up losing towers on the side in the meantime and, and lose the objective game overall. So for now, they make their own objective move, actually, and they move to the Roche Pit and look to take the Aegis. Well, Empire let this slide, though. They're already on the scene. Yeah, it's going to be a really difficult fight to take. Uh, against the ET, there's no mana, at least, so Push is not going to be able to do too much in this situation, but it's something that Empire are willing to rotate all five heroes for, and when the anti mage comes in, he kind of gives them that extra oomph to really just bring a target down before they can be saved. Garden Angel still on cooldown. Uh, Repel being level 3. It's just, it's not enough. Like, Alodance is going to be right up in there. He's going to get Fortunes Ended to break the Repel of his opponent. And then from there, it's really going to be difficult for Broodmothers to fight in that position. So they call it a wash. They back off. And I think Roche will be a point of contestation for a while. But I, unless one team gets completely wiped out, it's not yeah. going down. Certainly Empire are not going to allow modes to easily just kind of skate in there and take it for themselves so they'll be on watch and they're going to use this opportunity when they know that broodmothers have pulled away from that objective into going back into their normal rotation of farm. This is where Empire want to strike, and that's on the back of a smoke. They make their move. They catch out Focus, the lead and stun, able to catch Relax on the back end lines. They drop down the OD Hammer. Not enough to burst down the Omni, but they can't get him. Omni Slash does fly out from the other front as Focus looks to try to get this Oracle. Is it going to be enough? He tries to TP away, but they crit him through, and here comes Broodmothers, but an Epi jumps in from the backside. Not going to be enough from Ghost Chick, and now he gets mana leaked. He can't make his way out. They hit him with a big heal, and he is going to be going down. A two for nil trade. Mm -hmm. This has been Broodmother's best fight of the game so far. Absolutely. Just a little bit awkward from the Elder Titan there. Not able to really find a good spot for his spirit to go. And in the end, I think the biggest thing was the Kunkka's Rum coming across. The Omni Knight is a tar hero that you want to burst down. You take him down first, everything else about Broodmother's team fight crumbles because they just can't survive the damage output of Empire. But uh, they Kunkus Rome came over the Omni Knight when he was about half HP. He later on dropped to Fatal, uh, down to 1 HP when the Kunkus Rome wore off, but it gave him the extra durability he needed to keep himself healed, keep himself alive. So, really, really clutch play there from the Kunkka, from the Omni Knight to survive. And then from there, the, the rest of the fight kind of just falls apart from Empire. They couldn't get the ET in the way they needed to, and two heroes end up going down along with that Roshan on the side of the Brood Mothers. Huge, huge momentum swing right now. For Broodmothers, I mean, it doesn't put the game back even. It does cut the lead in half from Empire, and, you know, the morale goes up, certainly. And the momentum for Broodmothers could begin to shift. They recognize that Empire can get overzealous in situations and that they're not as hard-hitting and strong as they may think. You could see it by the capability that Broodmothers were able to kind of keep that Omni alive. Now, they're not going to have ship for every waking moment, but luckily for them, it is a pretty damn small cooldown. And if they do kind of get their hands dirty once again, they will be prepared. And it looks like Broodmothers want to kind of keep this momentum going, Blaze. They head to the bottom lane, and they're looking to at least uh, get rid of these Tier 1s finally, if possible. Yeah, going for this five-man push uh, enables the anti-mage to kind of make his way somewhere else. So I believe that anti-mage is going to pro probably TP top lane. The OD is already Already there, and let's just kind of dodge this. You don't want to fight into an Aegis, into an Omni Knight with his ultimate, so just 
kind of avoid it is yeah. your best option here, I think. You just go ahead, you split push the lane, you take mid, you take top, while they're all focused bottom. And right now, Broodmother's lineup isn't that strong in terms of mobility. They're not able to really jump from lane to lane and stop split push, so that's the, the best option for Empire, at least until you're looking at either your mid-tier 2 or your bottom-tier 3. So if you're Broodmother's, you're just trying to get to that point, you're just saying, as fast as possible. Try to get to the tier 2 pressures... Maybe see if you can pull Empire, Empire away while you still have the advantage of the Aegis. Yes, you definitely want to take advantage of the Aegis, and that means taking the the entirety of the, this bottom lane and, and try to at least put pressure on mid. But they're going to go for the high ground. This should be the, the defense It's a position from Empire. They, they obviously want to keep pushing. They got the glyph, but now it's time to go home. Let's see what they could do with it here already. TA begins to go to work. On this tier 3, Focus moves right in to wipe out some of the creeps, and then they reposition back on the low ground once again. While this happens, they still have some pressure from Aloha Dance, pushing down that mid lane towards that tier 2. But uh, Broodmothers have not buckled yet. They're still here, Damn. and proud, and ready to push. Yeah, it's a little difficult in this position because you are up against that ET, and now G coming out from Invis just goes for a quick imprison. They're going to combo it up with a guaranteed sleep here onto Kaiser. Yes, Repel they do. comes out immediately, though. With the two connecting, the follow-up Epi, they're looking to burst down the one focus target, and they will be able to take down the Jug. The boat comes, it connects on the three, but it's a bit too late if they're hoping to use it to save him. And now they got to get the hell out of here. Aloha Dance has shown up, and he's looking to make his move. Blinding Light will keep him backing away, and they try to go some fr so for some frantic TPs. Ill will be able to make it out in a way. Poor little Coddle. Well, his broken hip is going to be, well, shattered into a million pile of crumbled bones. Oh, no, he survives. And he actually makes it away. I moved on ahead to see if they were going to be able to get the catch on Omni Knight, and it looks like they may. They surround him as four, and he goes down. Kato makes it out alive, as mentioned. Omni not going to be so blessed. Yeah, so it was essentially a blind stun from Ghostic. He thought he'd had a, a good beat on his position in the trees, and instead misses him, oh. and that just gives him the, the HP he needed to go for the TP away, where Oracle and, and SK couldn't finish him off. But uh, the way that fight broke down really comes down to the repel usage and, and the decision there from the Omni. I understand that he was tempted to go for the TA because like she was in the more aggressive position compared to the Juggernaut, and Juggernaut generally will have Manta or Spin to get out of tough spots. However, the sleep into Sand King combo is something that he just really can't react to. They were able to burst him in that short duration. They do have some natural order, as well as Purifying Flame's nuke power. So uh, the the best thing that you can do as an Omni Knight in that situation is repel the person that doesn't have Aegis. At least if you lose the TA, she comes right back, yeah. popping, probably with another set of refraction, and you're able to take a fight. Instead, you lose the Juggernaut, no Aegis on him, no cooldowns used whatsoever, so focus is gone, and, and so is the fight. They're in full retreat from there, so it really comes down to the decision to repel the TA, which, like I said, I think that Relax, I understand why he did it, but unfortunately the, the burst damage was just too strong, and the Juggernaut could not survive. Yeah, who knows? I mean, it, it could be the TA going, hey, give me the repel or yeah. something like that, uh, but now you see it from Broodmothers. They're like, we gotta make the use out of this Aegis then. If we were not able to kind of Make some strong use out of it there for the bottom lane push. we got to get right back to work here. Top lane, they get the tier 1 down. They're already pressuring the tier 2. And they're looking to come a-knocking at that northern door of Empire base and hoping to make a good fight happen from it. But we'll see how much time they actually get. A recall pulls the TA right back into action. Tier 2 goes down. And now Empire will prepare in case the high ground push is a-coming. We'll see if Broodmothers want to follow through with it or opt for a different game plan here. It looks like for now they'll kind of step off and take care of the, the jungle farm. It looks like they just might not be hanging around too long. Yeah. I talked a lot about the setup of Fortune's End into the Elder Titans' sleep, but honestly, they have so many ways to set it up now. You, We just got to see the OD out of Invis use the Astro Imprisonment, which is a, so much time to set up. Four full seconds. Oh, yeah. You're going to get that stomp unless, unless there's like a blink out or... There's a repel in like that fraction of a second, but it's extremely unlikely. Uh, he was Miposh goes perfectly on point with the timing there, and now he's got a Yule Scepter as well. So yep. you're going to be able to get the sleep out on at least one, maybe multiple targets in the pushing situation, and that's going to be just so advantageous for Empire. It will be more peculiar if he happens to miss a stop exactly. at this point with so many ways of being set up, whether it be his teammates or, as you already mentioned, his brand new shiny Yule Scepter. Uh, so we'll have to see what kind of use they're going to be able to make out of it. Certainly helps them quite a bit in the defensive department as Broodmothers now smoke and move here through the bottom lane. Again, no Aegis for any sort of skirmish here moving forward, but they are running on through, hoping to catch anyone who was in the lane. It was the Elder Titan. He's using that new move speed from the Yules to make it back inside the base. 
and he looks to be good for now. But pressures are coming because the clock keeps ticking. This AM keeps farming, and so is the OD. I don't know if you want to keep playing against the clock here if you're BM. Absolutely, you do not. But at the end of the day, you kind of have to make an aggressive decision here. The Aegis has gone, but they're going to at least be able to get the Glyph here while Alo Dance continues to, to rat out the top lane. Tier 2 gone for the Radiant. They, they, the last push, they lost their mid. Now they lost their top, but a Broodmother's not flinching here. They've just got to play around the spell set. They have to make sure there's always Repel on the Templar Assassin. And then, of course, you're going to be seeing them try to avoid the... Earth, or the Sand King initiation as much as possible. The actually best way that Empire can start this fight when there's only a Repel TA on the high ground is actually start off with the uh, Channel of Fortune's End on the Sand King, and he blinks onto the TA. If oh, you can time yeah. that really well, you can get the Repel off just through the AoE factor, yep. and then stun or if you have the Epicenter available. The problem is, uh, because Blink disjoints projectiles, you actually have to be blinked on first, and then the Fortune's End has to come through, and usually the TA will have time to react. So... It's, it's a very narrow timing window where all these combos can come through, but if you can manage to take away any of those defensive abilities from the enemy, the Repel or the GA, then this Oracle is going to really just pull his own weight. You got to go Mega next level, and you get Coddle, his spirit form. You recall the Oracle as he's casting it on himself, and then he shows up and gets the AoE with it and purges it off. That is when you take it next level. But no, I, I love those little oh. intricacies with the Oracle top lane. Epicenter, they're committing in hard for this TA, and she will go down. My god, that was vicious. Yeah, just really pushing a little bit too quickly. They they recognized that she was by herself thanks to a nice little Observer Ward uh, on the top lane, and they were able to exploit that quite effectively. So, again, every minute counts for Broodmothers here. They're looking to break high ground. They're looking to end this game pretty soon because this anti-mage, he's already at 3 a.m., and he's going to be building himself up even further very quickly. Yep. The cookie cutter buildup continues here, and once he's reached his final form is when he's at his scariest, obviously. Broodmothers... With the lineup they got, can't really amount to much of a of a stronghold if this AM begins to, to ball out of control. So they'll try their best to kind of keep the momentum moving, but it, it seems like it continues to be a bit of an uphill struggle to even get these creeps across the river. Empire, through the majority of this game, have shown, you know, Great decision making and splitting the pressure across the other lanes, recognizing when it's an okay time to take a fight and when it's not. So for Broodmothers to be able to, you know, take a fight and then follow the objective doesn't seem too likely at the moment. We'll just have to see what what kind of options they're going to be able to find for themselves because Empire can continue to, you know, take this nice and slow in the meantime. Ghost Chick at his top lane here. He's he's quickly accumulated nearly 2k worth of gold. And after already completing your mobility tool belt of a four staff and a blink dagger, what would you think would be in his best interest at this point? You know, for the meantime, it's it could be anything to prepare any sort of high ground defense. But you know, does he do you need to bother going on more of the offensive with his itemization? Um, jump on G here on yeah. the mid lane. And then we'll get back to that point. Uh, the X mark back. is going to keep him locked in. There's pretty much no way for him to get out. But um, sorry, who are you talking about specifically? For the Sand King. For the Sand King. Here. He's, he's pulling a lot of money for himself right now. Yeah, I think he can stay in utility for right now. I mean, yeah, Veil plus the Natural Order is a really strong combo for damage output. But honestly, like you can go even for something like a Diffusal Blade up against an Omni Knight where you just need to guarantee getting your spells out. Actually, spells out on top. His yep. focus is going to be nuked. And with the AM on top, it should be enough. They don't have a Bash or anything to really lock him in place. So it looks like focus is going to be able to spin and, and disengage thanks to the phase boots. But that was a very close call. Uh, close. A little awkward there at the end. I don't know if Aloha was asking for the force a bit sooner. They tried to shove him in to kind of get the final blow, but as mentioned, without any sort of lockdown or way to stop him in his tracks, the Jug just spins his way uh, into Freedom Land, and that is going to be an epicenter down for Empire and a, and a bit of ammunition that they're not going to be able to spend. Meanwhile, a uh, nice little covert mission here coming out from the Keeper. He gets that ward down the mid lane. Can see any movement from the back lines of Empire, maybe any sort of smoke play here, and just kind of leading into Broodmother's expecting that they're going to have to make that push again. Yep. And uh, the Roshan is going to be back up. Of course, the TA trap in the pit will know this, and I think that's going to be the next big thing, is uh, the Keeper rewards can, that he just placed out will allow them to see if maybe Empire are about to set up for a smoke play or any other kind of movement towards the pit, and this is going to make it easier for Broodmother's to, to just kind of go into it. Again, TA very good at taking down Rush very quickly, has the Mel Dezo, but... 
Empire have these big AoE wombo combos, and it's still going to be tough. I think their best option is actually just to throw in the TA in the pit all by herself and hope that Repel sticks. Uh, I'm almost not sure how fast they're going to be going for it while well, maybe the uh, Epicenter was still on cooldown, but it looks like they're going to hold off a bit while the TA looks to go for those stacks and then probably has to keep the pressure away from that top lane, which Aloha Dance have been beginning to push on in. But eventually, as mentioned, the Broodmothers will make their approach towards this Roche Pit here. And we'll have to see Empire with their huge amount of AoE and a fantastic ability to work in these tight choke points. It is very scary for Broodmothers to move into. Now the smoke comes out. Empire heading across the river. Ghost Chick, very ballsy, aggressive move right in. Will be able to spot out the Coddle. Stuns him in. A heal comes through, but it's not going to be enough. Now TA begins to go to work, and they get a little oh, hunt. down. Wow. They burst them real fast. And now Focus is beginning to make his move. King Arc tries to save himself with the False Promise, but that is not going to be enough to save him from this wrath of damage coming through. Huge fight for Broodmothers means that they can lead right into the Roche Pit. A triple kill for the Jug. Oh, things are on the up and up for the Radiant. And just over on the western side of the jungle, this one little TA trap, the Anti-Mage just for a fraction of a second walked over the vision of this TA trap, and they were able to ping him out, make the move they needed to. Yes, there was backup from the Empire, but it wasn't in time, so they were able to, to break down AM, who was just too far on the front line. He's, he was beefy 20 minutes ago, but now his items are kind of just average for what you'd expect from an AM, and, and the TA, just one crit is all you really need. Now she's got the Daedalus, which punches even harder, and down that guy goes. So we're going to be seeing that Empire have to play very carefully around Aloha and around G. They have to be much more core focused than they have been so far this game. Before, it was just like, okay, we'll yeah. shut Cruise down control. BM. We'll go for really cool gank plays, whatever. But now they really have to sit behind their carries, their, their cores, and make sure that they can make the plays happen and protect them at all costs. Uh-oh. They spotted an Elder Titan here. As he's trying to make a push out in the mid lane, they will be able to shoot him down. He gets dropped as Aloha Dance does make his own rotation in, but Broodmothers are feeling it right now, and they don't seem to be done yet. Still perched up here towards the mid lane, and Aloha Dance blinking in through the mid lane right across the TA here. If she had a bit more backup... And top... Oh, if, yeah, if she's going to be able to burst him down in the top lane. G is going to be popping his BKB, staying right on top of the Kunkka here, and, and taking away all of his intelligence. The recall won't help, and... Oh, no. Actually going to be able to get him. Oh, they will. The they blink in, they commit, and they got him down. That was very close. Yeah, but still losing the Oracle in mid there to TA. Still doing a lot of work. Kaiser, just, again, one credit's all it takes in these fights, and he's able to just chunk down these supports so quickly. So uh, Kaiser gets his uh, dividends, but of course the OD, though he has to pop his 10-second BK before it is able to isolate and bring down the Kunkka. It is a lot of firepower to take down that Kunkka support, but this is our... I mean, you see he how many times he had to hit him. He's still 28 intelligence, so that is a, that is a lot of hits. That that's yeah. not a quick kill. Seven yeah. auto attacks just to, and then the ultimate just to bring down a single Kunkka with that armlet. You have the AM, but I mean, Brumos are reminding him, oh, uh, reminding uh, everyone that they have top, great late scaling. Uh, SK epicenter combo, and it's just gonna be enough if he uses him or punches him one last time, and. That's going to be unfortunate for the Coddle. He's going to be in those kind of positions where he's trying to just push out the lanes. And without like an Axe or something, it's often going to be a, a compromised position that yeah. Ghostix so far has been able to exploit really well in this tree line. Been a tough day for the Coddle, you know, because he's kind of being that man to kind of take those kind of pot shots and, and hand over the farm. He is uh, does not have an Agnum Scepter in a, in a great time that you would normally like, and you can hope for like blinding lights to keep you away from situations like that and keep the pressure out, but... He's doing his job for now, and Broodmothers are allowing other heroes like this Kunkka to really be able to scale. He has his own little crit on top of his armlet. This Kunkka is going to be able to hit pretty damn hard, keep the wave clears and push back, and this is now turned into a game that's going to be very scary for Empire. We're about, about even again in the net worth, mm -hmm. and things could change as Broodmothers now smoke up and begin to go on the move. Yeah. But I do think the Empire still have a, a lot of great ways to, to deal with uh, heavy engages for the Rune Mother. Uh, we have another Yule Scepter coming out for the Sand King here. So you've got the Odi Imprisonment, two Yule Scepters. You can either keep a hero alive for a really long time, or it, ideally you can just kind of throw the Omni Knight or the TA up in the air repeatedly if they don't have the Repel on them. So that's going to allow you to really take them out of the fight for a long, long time. Miposhka, unfortunately, going to get caught out once again, but oh. on the back line. They've changed targets. Wanted to go for the AM as they catch him with the Torrent. Or catch him with the X marks the spot, but they're not going to have enough lockdown to stop him in his place. Now the Omni does fly forward. Aloha Dance with the False Promise tries to make it back inside, but it's not going to be enough to save him. He goes down, has a buyback, 
because the approach is coming here for Broodmothers. They slash down another. A double kill comes out for Focus as he turns it up here into the later game. And they quickly etch out two from Empire now with a 5-3 to three advantage. Broodmothers quickly scamper back, get these creeps down, and want to make an assault right towards the Empire base. I can't help but feel that there are some serious communication issues coming out from Empire. This is the second time Aloha Dance has been way too far forward considering his team's uh, ability to deal with the engagement and actually going to be poster just two shot here Whoa. Spider jumps in one crit one hit and the et even canceled his stomp so uh even if the repel wasn't there it's just a clean kill and they just don't have great ways of reacting to this he didn't even sell fuels in that situation they're, they're losing just, racks man they're, they're just, not buying back they're losing racks they are buying back and they're still going to lose the bottom line they want to hold on to that am buyback though I mean, Brunmos might have been hoping to at least force that out, but they're going to be walking away with a, another bit of rewards here as they get that bottom set of racks. They pull off, and they're going to be feeling pretty damn good. The money that's going to be soaking in now. Poor little Coddle's going to be that much richer. The Omni Knight can pull all together. More utility. I mean... It's just great stuff right now for Broodmothers. At what felt like a bit of a handicap at the start of this game, a wonderful pro performance from the Sand King in the offlane, and, and things are beginning to slip away. Yeah. We didn't talk too much about this matchup and where the teams are at in the scene right now, but mm -hmm. uh, with the looking at the schedule for today and looking at the fact that they're Empire facing Broodmothers first and Vega next, you had to imagine that Broodmothers was, in their mind, the easier matchup. That this was going to be something that they could definitely, theoretically, 2-0 at least 1-1. And then Vega would be the, the harder challenge. But actually looking this bad in game one up against Broodmothers, you have to be a little bit worried for them. Could be just them shaking off the rust the first mm -hmm. first game. I mean, yeah. I mean the roster swap pr it was pretty recent. So trying to get their feet back underneath them and, and really find the, a full five-man team out of this roster yeah. is, is definitely a, a unique challenge. For a lot of these teams, I know they've played a little bit in uh, like the Pro Dota Cup just before this. So it's not their first, you know, toes in the water experience of this new shuffle period, but they are all still learning about the chemistry with their team and, and what works and what doesn't work here. And uh, for right now, Empire in a, a little bit of a pickle for game number one, but they are not backing down here. Already across the river here, hoping to get an approach on Broodmothers here from the north, but Broodmothers here, a bit savvy to it. They've already pulled in their own reinforcements, and they're looking to take things a bit slow. They get the early repel here. Oh, Ghostchick shows himself. Has to quickly go into Sandstorm and pulls back it away, but they move in for it, but she goes right into the Abyssal Stun. But the Guardian Angel will come out, and with that, Broodmothers look to make their mighty turn. The boat will also fly, and now they are hard like a rock as they move on in with a strong defense. They get the pullback there for Ghostchick. He tries to force away, but he gets knocked on down. Picked up right there as a double kill comes together there for the TA. And that will be the end of it. Empire quickly just make their retreat. They lose two, and things are not going to be getting any easier. Yeah, this is getting really rough for them. But at the beginning of the game, was really the ghost stick show that Sankey was able to do so much. But as the game goes on, this hero is not able to really scale with the full potential of what Broodmothers bring to the table. I mean, Kaiser doesn't have to even go for BKB because nobody on Empire has bought a Diffusal Blade, so they can't consistently purge off that Repel, and Kaiser can just kind of go at, to bat with these hard right-click items that are taking away so much armor. Right now, you've got Desolator taking 7, AC taking 5, along with the Mel taking another 8. He's able to just burst down these heroes with so much physical damage, and he's always going to have Repel on. We'll have to see what Empire can do now for a high ground defense. They have everyone but the Sand oh. King, but man, they just quickly take out that TA. They commit in hard, they get the Mana Void off, and Aloha Dance will walk away with the kill under his belt. And now they're looking for scrappy seconds here. Oh, a leap up and over will unfortunately lose the opportunity at stopping the Omni Knight, but he was already well underway. And uh, Broodmothers still trying to run out. Focus will pop the Manta here, and that seems to be the end of it. A quick hold there for Empire allows them a bit more time. Yeah, they timed it really well. With the Repel ending, they're just like, go now. They jump in. They get the Abyssal. They get the combo from OD. They, they took no chances with that. No holds barred. And, uh, well, it is going to be Empire cleaning up the biggest kill of the game here and taking up that unstoppable streak. But they don't get the gem back, unfortunately. Uh, that was one thing that Miposhka lost in the last time that Broodmothers were at the base, and, and now it's gone. But uh, Focus actually is manning up on Aloha Dance, and Aloha Dance just says, I'm ready for you. Turns around with the Abyssal Blade, but f all the spells come out at once, and it is going to be Focus still able to disengage. Uh, I don't think either one of them really loses much from that exchange. Focus is feeling... Very confident because he's got that Kunkka, he's got that Coddle right behind him. 
lots of ways to save him out. They even commit the boat and everything for that. And it's something that Empire, by now, should have hopefully acknowledged. I mean, a tough tortoise shell of a defense coming out from Broodmothers now with, with everything coming together. And things like the Coddle Ags, which is getting closer and closer, puts out that ridiculous amount of spam heals, especially when daytime begins to roll in. And, you know, we were saying up to about a few moments ago that Broodmothers are playing a type of game where they have to play against the clock, but is that still the same case? I mean, it feels like, hmm. you know, at this point, Empire are just finding those brief windows where they can kind of hold out and stall things out, but it still feels like Broodmothers are just the ones in control now. I think it has shifted quite a bit because Juggernaut now has, like, Butterfly as well as almost an Abyssal Blade. He just has so much more... Uh, hard practical combat items than this anti-mage. Sure, he doesn't have the Battle Fairy, so he can't keep up with farm with the Battle Fairy, but it just the, the critical items that he needs to keep up in, in fighting potential are still there. And I feel like they've got a point of leverage with this Omni Knight. Repel is such an amazing skill. I mean, not having to invest 4,000 gold into a BKB on one, if not both of your two carries in, in this kind of a situation, it just brings so much more than something like the, the ET, at least in, in this case. A lot of times you could say ET is a great late game hero. He's able to make the spells connect that will set up so many guaranteed fights, but we just haven't seen it from Miposha this game. If Miposha stepped it up, I would feel confident about Empire late game, but from what he's played so far, I actually give Broodmothers the edge at this point. And for not being able to move into something like a defusal, I mean, they don't really have an appropriate defusal no. kind of candidate on their team. But you can't let that stop you. You have to say, yeah. like, I've seen J Jakiro buy a defusal play just because it's necessary. It, it's it, Against an Omni Knight, if you don't have something like a Doom to purge it off with a Seder Creep, then you really just need to go ahead, suck it up, and buy it on a hero that it is considered suboptimal. On. I mean, even the OD could invest in it, and it would be worth their money. Yeah, I, don't, I just, I'm curious to see from Empire's perspective, like what they feel like. Maybe they were not expecting to be put in a position where they were gonna have to, uh, you know, optimize the sense of getting a defusal on someone who typically would not have to get it, or maybe we're hoping to be in a position where you wouldn't have to get a defusal at all. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case in this game. Broodmothers are certainly in control, and they're making another big stride as they get this row. Shalom Dance though does jump in and makes quick work of the Coddle, taking him out of the picture right away. And they're hoping for more focus. Well, they try to focus him down. He goes for the Omni, but it gets quickly canceled out. The gem's going to be hitting the deck, but he has to quickly 180 back towards his team here. Jumping from the other side, they try to make a move with Help the Ghost Chick right there. And under the pressure, Kaiser will be able to pull back it away. His TA eating a lot of the damage, but the Guardian Angel will be there to help out. Empire, step back, move forward. Can they get the grab on for the Omni? Yes, they can. Empire, taking waves right back now. As Broodmothers will be able to move in. They get the Roche... But uh, Empire will be able to get some momentum back, bringing down a couple of supports. Yeah, but Juggernaut still walks with the Aegis, and it looks like the cheese was eaten. Not sure by who, but it was consumed in the, in the midst of that, or at least denied, and will not be on the table. So and Broodmother still get the the key factor here in that Aegis, and but Juggernaut no, can just go in. Yeah, no Guardian Angel now. No Omni Knight on the field. He does have buyback, but... You know, Even still, GA. it's really hard for Empire to, like, in the next 20 seconds or so, break the base. And, yeah, there's no Guardian Angel, but two Juggernauts just means you can throw yep. Focus's body at them. And it's still a position Empire don't want to fight in. Jug's cleaving away creeps. Coddle Blast flying out. TA, I mean, it's n actually never going to be an easy task for Empire to make a push into the base unless they get some sort of serious, serious team wipe happening. So Empire now will just take the winnings they got and get back into their own grind a farm but you know we are starting to see a position where some of these late game cores are getting pretty full and running out of inventory slots and we'll have to see what kind of shift up they're going to make here aloha dance now sporting nearly 3k goes right back to work here in the bottom lane where where does he go from here now to, to make best use i mean that last slot yeah, you can you can look at different items like the heart. Uh, moon shard's not too bad to just because you can eat it as your next move and still have that six slot available. Um, BOTs obviously the mobility is very very important, but uh, even BKB could be theoretically effective in these kind of tough situations. It won't help you against the TA unfortunately, who will most likely go MKB next. Actually, she went for the BKB herself, so uh, she she realizes that repel is not going to be around forever. <laughs> But end of the day, yeah, I, I almost don't necessarily feel it's Aloha Dance's items that will define the next thing as we look for this big smoke flank in bottom. Ooh, they get the mana leak. He does blink away. Well, they make a move for Aloha Dance. Uh -oh. X tried to manta it. it off, but not going to be there with the timing. 
Does get a false promise, which helps purge away the trouble, but the chase is still on here. Steps back, is going to be forced to abyss Oh, got stun, another X. And they get off, pull back, X again. AM, not going anywhere. Good catch there mm -hmm. from Broodmothers. Yeah, in theory, I think the Caudal Agadims giving that extra clear vision over the trees would still have gotten the kill, even if that second X hadn't come out, but it'll just... Quick fingers with that short eight second cooldown is able to keep him within range. So nice cleanup kill on Aloha. But as I was saying before, I'm not even sure if it's Aloha Dance's next item that will define the next thing. It's the fact that while he's been happily farming things away, topping net worth and CS, his supports and all the other members have taken a secondary position in farm. So you look at the ET, who's had a Eulus for a really long time, but where's the Ghost Scepter? Where's the Diffusal Blade? Uh, same thing with the Oracle, who's only got the Ether Lens. Like, they just need more. And now they don't have it as they get. Just obliterated by focus. Nice four staff, nice false promise, but these are not cooldowns you want to be using on just an ET. No. And as focus makes a hard, deep committed dive, and the tier three does go down here in the mid lane, Aloha Dance does go into his piggy bank, pulls out the buyback now. So Brunmos can pull off reposition and use that to their advantage. And, uh, and though the kill score does say Empire ahead 19 to 17, you look at the net worth and it tells a very different story. As uh, we do continue to see Broodmothers well in ahead here, as they have more of a well-rounded bulk of farm for their team mm. as a whole, as yeah. opposed to Empire, who have just like two powerhouse hitters and then a foundation which seriously lacks in resources. Absolutely. And Aloha Dance expends a lot of those resources with that buyback. Uh, you even see the, un the buyback gold penalty. He has to wait just to farm Ancients. It's just, it's not a good time. Uh, this was a very clean disengage from Broodmothers. Your goal there is just to get the anti mage buyback and then back out without anybody dying. Uh, because uh, the ET was the one under, under pressure, he couldn't catch anybody in retreat. And as a result, now Empire are down that buyback, which I'm positive Broodmothers will exploit within the next seven minutes. So... Yeah, we're going to be seeing a six-minute time window where Broodmothers can just keep on pushing, keep on pressuring. You see the lines are on the map. They're going top lane. And if they can kill AM just one time, the game is over. Broodmothers will be able to take the Ancient. 46 minutes in to our very first BTS Europe Series match here is Broodmothers. Looking to pull out a good start with what most would consider a bit of an upset here. Empire, a team with some very recognizable names, a familiar name in the Dota scene. Broodmothers, a team... Looking to make more of a name for themselves. Uh, a, a good start, a good win here against Empire could uh, allow them to build up some momentum for the, the remainder of this tournament. And uh, definitely a name that I will begin to remember here moving forward. So that's what I was hoping for because I know when you handed over the team list as we do go into a pause, a lot of teams that I had heard little bits of but had not had the opportunity of really watching and exploring. So I'm hoping about learning a lot of new players and a lot of new teams in this journey we're going to have. Yeah, well... Those that are impressed by the play of Bro Broodmothers here, these are pretty much the second best Greek team in Dota 2. Oh uh, yeah, can't uh, forget Adfinem, our other Greek boys who are also in this series. It's it's hard to it's hard to be top dog when Adfinem's your your <laughs> primary competition there, but the Broodmothers have shown that they have the full potential to take games off of tier one teams. So uh, while they, I wouldn't say are the most threatening uh, presence in the European scene, they they've shown that they they have potential, and we'll see it in this next season whether or not they're able to rise to that occasion. Seen plenty of teams over my what is does not generally feel like a lot of years casting Dota uh, Dota start in a position like this and then you see them at a major in the future so mm -hmm. we'll see where uh, Broodmothers can take it from here we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves with just game number one uh, they made their approach down that top lane but we're not able to make any sort of breach but they know that Empire still have their hands full here with this continuous juggle of pressure between all three lanes. And with the supports still not really having a lot under their belts, they only have so many tools to work with to try to keep this pressure back. And, you know, at any moment you could see a, a jumping back line of a focus or a TA that could just one shot you. So the scare is there for Empire. Mm. Four minutes left on that buyback clock. Uh, I do feel that Broodmothers should pressure this. While they have been really uh, doing a good job of controlling the map, I really do feel like this is an opportunity that doesn't come all too often. To have your enemy carry with no buyback, with uh, the only saving grace is that false promise. If you can just find an opening, if you can either pick up the Oracle or the AM, you're going to be in a really great place just to end the game right there. So while, yeah, you can just still keep controlling the map, getting that next big item, I kind of do feel like... Right now, you have lethal on the board, and you should go for it. We'll see if they oh, do. Especially against this Oracle. Ooh, oh. he, he tried to creep in. He wants to get that ward down. They want that vision bad. And they'll safely get him back into the base with the help of four staff. Don't go out there again. It's very scary. I mean, Broodmothers looking to tighten that noose around Empire here as they're not allowing them to really slip out any sort of side door. 
But here they come. A little bit of time left here on the Aloha Dance buyback clock, and we'll see if Brumos can capitalize on it or not. And in the meantime, we do see that the Kunkka has been able to transition into the semi-carry. Like, he's putting out a lot of damage oh, yeah. with the Tidebringer. He's got the armlet, almost has a Daedalus, too. Like, they are essentially running a full Tricor, not even counting the Omni Knight. The beauty of the Kunkka, something that Lanham certainly uh, sold a lot of people on through his TI run. They early build into the armlet, and suddenly this guy becomes a, a quick core here. We used to see a lot with like those four position Wraith Kings back in the day, just the way they're able to have that high ceiling, they could segue into the late game. And then, yeah, transition from something like what was it once a dual core into a tri-core just gives you so many new windows and so many new opportunities when we get into this portion of the game. And we will have a little bit of a pause here coming out from our Greek boys, but we will wait a bit and see what Empire will do to defend because it's coming right in this mid lane. Yeah, it's a tough position to be in. He did, we did see the anti-mage go back for the BKB. It's very frustrated by the X mark and any kind of really stun combos coming out from the Kunkka. Uh, it's not really, like I said, great against the physical damage output coming in from the Juggernaut, from the TA, but end of the day, those heroes can only hit you if they have the lockdown and, and the ability to stay on top of you. So while you're still afraid of the Abyssal Blade of the Juggernaut, I do feel like this BKB was the right choice. We'll see if it's enough here as the, the high ground might break open. Here we go. We still got plenty of time on these BKBs if you're BM here, so Sand King's tools can be rendered useless. A big deep in from Focus! He's going to be forced to try to spin and get the hell out from trouble. The boat will fly, and certainly helps mitigate a lot of the damage there. And BM are still moving forward. Some hard shots there. On to G, but not enough of a follow-up. They reposition, step back below the staircase here. Rax is still exposed, obviously, for Empire. Focus gets his life back, goes right back into work, gets some good chops here, trying to quickly take out the easier ranged Rax. But Empire will be able to kind of get rid of all the creeps and hold those Rax for now. No serious losses here. No big cooldowns expended quite yet. A slow game here from BM to kind of whittle down these Rax in a slow sieging process maybe in hopes that Empire will be the ones to kind of pull the trigger first. If Empire do step out of position, though, expect a quick strike to come in from these hard hitters. You always have the Kunkka, you oh. have the Blast flying through, and now they make their strike. Focus is in there, gets hit with the Abyssal, the ODO flies, but so does the Guardian Angel, and a bow! Connects right onto G, holds him in place, Omni Slash, though, begins to fly on forward. Focus with his own Abyssal, looking to lock down Aloha Dance, can he get the job done? G's hitting him! Oh, that's not going to be enough, the Repel is there, and Focus limps himself away to safety. No one from BM goes down yet. Empire lose two, they lose their racks, and it looks like both could be dropping. Ghost Chick hops right back in for Kaiser, and they will be able to take down the TA with a nice little combo coming out from your Sand King. Oh, going but hard in. done yet. Focus Woo. all by himself. Going to get stunned up. Anti or the Omni Knight just bails on him. So sorry, buddy. You're the, the one behind enemy lines. And we're going to leave you all by yourself. Every man for himself at this point. But it looks like Kunkka, manly as he is, is going to be locked down as well. Omni Knight will be able to make himself back safely to the well. But Ill is going down for a four-man swing. Four for two here on the high ground. Yes, they do lose the range racks, but Empire are starting to swing back. And uh, while it wasn't as prevalent in this fight as it could have been, uh, we do see that Diffusal Blade actually picked up on the OD. He used three charges on it, didn't end up securing any kills with it, but it, it definitely limited the impact that Broodmother's uh, Guardian Angel had on the overall engagement. So I still think most of it comes down to that final uh, counter, kind of counter, counter initiation coming out from the Sand King. They started it, Sand King finished it. And AM was able to follow through very nicely. So, uh, pretty hot and heavy exchange, but it looks like Broodmother uh, have, at least uh, for now, met their match on the high ground. We'll have yeah. to see if uh, Empire can keep this momentum rolling, keep wiping, and, and keep bringing Broodmothers down until finally Empire make it to the Radiant Base. I mean, Bro Broodmothers, I wouldn't even say weren't even hasty in that push either. They did have a little bit of patience with it, kind of feeling it out. Uh, but then when they made their hard commitment, man, Empire just punched them right in the nose. And Broodmothers took that and tried to just at least make it away with some decent amount of survivors. But once Empire recognized the momentum they had built up, they were hoping to punish Broodmothers as much as possible for it. So good on them exercising some great patience in that play. In particular, yeah, that Sand King with the late, the late hit. And uh, with some new items now coming their way. Some of those supports you were, you and I both were kind of, you know, getting a little heavy on as far as where they were lacking in the resource department. They're, they're starting to string together some good utility here. Lotus Orb now on your Ghost Chick, while uh, Oracle with his own Ghost Scepter here allowed some uh, extra bit of survivability and necessary. 
and we'll just have to see. Because uh, I imagine does this this game this br brings the game nearly back even at this point. I mean, we're, uh, we're the only point. the only main factor that turns tilts it the other way is the racks, and I think that the fact yeah. that they've lost racks is offset by the fact that they currently have Aegis and Cheese. If they can make use of those, they can oh. even up the racks and actually almost bring down the coddle. Almost get that coddle down, man. He barely makes it out from there. So. Nice jump in there. Empire need to be aggressive during this time phase where they have the Aegis because, again, as soon as that Aegis is gone, the, the Rack's advantage, I think, still tilts slightly in favor of Broodmother. But in terms of fighting potential, I think they're relatively even. We'll have to see. I mean, I obviously would favor probably Broodmothers with the way they're able to wave clear and kind of stall things out. But, you know, Elder Titan and Cleaving AM and all that nonsense here on Empire... Both teams are at that point in the game when they can kind of hold their own for now, even when your uh, three racks is down, let's say. We'll have to see, though. Empire, the team now that's going to be sitting on the other side of the river here in hopes that Broodmothers get a little overzealous in pushing out one of these side lanes. They may have spotted out TA there. Uh, she does head up and quickly makes work of this ancient camp. It's very easy to get a little bit too comfortable with having control over the map. You've been playing for 50 minutes with yeah. full control, being able to farm wherever you want, move wherever you want. Uh, you have to kind of get into a more cautious mindset now. One over extension, and, and you could be costing the team the game. It's very stressful at this point in time. You have to be constantly reevaluating whether your position is safe, where, where the enemy is moving, and you only have so much information through wards and scans to accomplish that. But we're going to be seeing Empire now kind of just make the, the full-on brute force push to the high ground on bottom lane. You've got the Moon Shard, and that Aegis up on Anti-Mage. Let's see what they can do. While that's happening, you know, Brumos are being a bit mischievous There's themselves. no TP on Juggernaut. He's going to have to get Coddle recalled. Uh, that does have some delay here. So it's it's definitely really important that they that he doesn't take any damage on the yeah. enemy side lines. They're and going for their own aggressive push, it looks like here, Blaze. Towards the top lane. Focus moves right in, pops his Manta. will quickly take out this Tier 3, and then goes a bit for the racks here. And as you mentioned, you know... We'll have to make it back and away on the back of that rappel, mm -hmm. and then Cottle will be there to kind of pull him back to safety. Yeah, it's a little bit risky in the sense that, like, let's, let's say the Sand King just blinks in and gets one auto attack off and cancels the recall, then the, the Juggernaut is in a really bad spot. He's far away from home. He has no way to get back. It's It can be very dangerous for him, but Brunelos played that well. They still were able to play the advantage of the Keep of the Light. Uh, where it's, you have that global movement, uh, not necessarily offensively, but defensively. So you say, hey, they're pushing us, I'll push them. And as long as you don't take damage during the duration of recall, you can exploit the entirety of the map that way. It's a lot of trust, I would say. Uh, yeah. Just making sure that everything kind of comes out the way it needs to, that you know where Empire is, that you know that you're not going to get hit, and that you can rely on the Keeper of Light to recall you at the exact time you need it. Yeah, you do have to put the extra into the trust of each other, because when you look at their map vision, it's not like the craziest no. thing ever. So you have to really just have faith in being able to know where your opponent is to be able to make these kind of risky moves. And for now, Broodmothers have been reading the situation pretty well. So we'll see if they continue to kind of keep that track or not. For now, kind of clumped here at the bottom. Do they have a smoke on hand? Doesn't look like it. Maybe one on route? No. Well, either way, we'll have to see what the next uh, assault is potentially going to be. we still got plenty of time for the Roche to come up, and Empire here kind of swaggering potentially towards this mid lane. So smoked up from behind. Oh, could be big. AM. They move in. And they make their commitment here. It's going to be for Ill. Guardian Angel does come out, so they're not going to be able to get the finish. Can they burst down? No. He gets forced out. He's safe for now. Brumo's waiting. The Omni Slash will fly out. They hope to mitigate the damage, but man, Aloha Dance eats a lot of it here. Gets the Lotus there at the end, which is going to be able to bounce back. Focus here, getting bashed on down. The ODL does fly, but not enough for a finish. Kunkka still lives, but then gets quickly hit up with the Astro. It looks oh. like he's set to pop down. Jump in. Here comes the Epicenter right on top of Kaiser, and the TA is going to get dropped. Has a buyback if necessary. Meanwhile, ooh, almost get ill, but he is going to be able to TP back inside the base here. And here comes Empire. They only lose their Oracle, but they're going to continue to fight on and try to make some pressure here in the mid lane. The Coddle Blast, though, trying to slow them down. Such a quick little play there from the OD. Uh, the TA is right on top of the OD, wailing into him with Repel on. OD very quickly defusal and imprisons him, setting up the SK for the full combo. As long as SK can bro strike before TA BKBs out of the imprisonment, you're golden. And uh, just OD... TA wasn't spamming hard enough, wasn't able to get the BKB out, and that is going to set up a very uh, important 
a swing to bring her down. Because otherwise, yeah, you're getting aggressive. You have the Aegis. You're like, yeah, we can take this. But we saw the initiation was extremely favorable for Broodmothers. So they were able to do so much damage so quickly. Oracle went down fast. Aegis popped. And it could have been very, very dangerous for them. But instead, Empire, with the, the little exchange between the OD and the SK, are able to, to turn it the other way. And while they do not bring down Rax, they do kind of walk away even. The, the problem is the map. Uh, now the Coddle has daytime as well as gem again yep. all these wards are getting cleaned up and the racks still keep pushing in on bottom so am still has to keep that battle fear in his inventory he did swap it out when he had the aegis but now he's like okay well i need the i need the the battle fear i need to wave clear and he's even going to be selling the butterfly because he doesn't because he's up against two mkbs so aloha dance's economy is in a really weird spot and the rest of empire are are kind of caught in a position where unless they're smoked they're going to be seen by the keeper oh Keeper was there as the watchdog, if you will, saw the approach of Empire here, and they're kind of using that to their benefit. Ghost Chick tried to make a hard commitment, trying to get the jug, but wasn't going to be good enough. Now he pops out the Omni, and they're kind of dragging him back to the rest of the team. He oh! finally pops out the Insta Hex. Meanwhile, the back lines, they get the quick burst, taking down the SK. It's Broodmother's time, and they're moving on four. Can they get G? He gets X, but then forced away. And there's a nice stomp, though, coming out from Miposhka, which will slow the roll of the Broodmothers, but they're not done yet. They continue to truck on forward. Oracle is out, no buyback, and Aloha Dance, well, he's going to be forced to pull out his buyback here and now. Could be his final buyback for the game. If things go well for Broodmothers here, it doesn't look like they're stopping yet. I admire uh, Aloha Dance for going for public enemy number one, the Omni Knight. Tries to just jump on the back line and Abyssal combo him, but unfortunately, he just takes way too much damage from the TA. His illusions are gone almost instantly from one hit through those side blades, and then uh, the rest go down, so... It's uh, just a lot of physical damage coming out from TA. He's not ready for it. Focus is in. He pops out the Blade Fury. Gets some good shots here. These melee racks with the TA and the Jug, they really don't stand a chance. Going to get cut through like butter here if Empire are not careful. There goes the early Earth Splitter, but it's going to be reflected back. Helped out from a Guardian Angel. Boats to fly. This Epicenter not going to be doing a whole lot of damage now. And it's going to be all about the firepower here coming out from the OD and Aloha Dance. But oh god, they get G down. Nice little strike there at the end. OD's going to be taken out. He's going to be forced to buy back now. Can Empire hold? It doesn't look like they can our first game of this BTS Europe series actually goes for a full hour and it looks like it could go the way of the Broodmothers here. There's one Rax that separates them from the Megas. Empire though are not looking to go down quite yet. They look to focus Ooh. down focus and they will be able to get him. He goes right into a buyback feeling like possibly they can close this one out with a recall from the Coddle. They bring him right back into the action now. He drops down the ward and they get right back into the groove. There oh, they got him! Insta stunned up! Hello I'm back and he goes right to work Odie's going to be taken right out of the game. They'll also get the Elder Titan, and it looks like they may be able to take the game here. Absolutely. That's going to be cleaning it up here. The Aloha Dance will do it, try as he might. We'll try to fight it up. Two versus five. It's just not going to happen. Ultra kill for Focus. Buying back into it to keep the kills rolling. And again, exploding that uh, long-range Coddle Recall for the full swing. And that is going to be it. Broodmother's taking the first game, the underdogs here, in yep. this best of two. And, and we've got one more game between these two teams to close it out. Definitely the team that when I saw the, the full list of teams that were going to be competing, I was like, okay, I don't know what that team is. I got to look at the roster. I looked over the names, some vaguely familiar. I was like, okay, a fresh new Greek squad here. I'm excited. I love Adfinem. Let's see what they can do. But you're going against Empire. They now have G. I was expecting Empire to come out and look to make a strong showing. But what does it really come down to? I don't want to be as harsh to say that they lacked respect for their opponent and Broodmothers, but maybe they were trying to coast through an AM game in hopes that things were going to go well, and they didn't itemize appropriately at least soon enough. What was your take on it? Yeah, I mean, sure, they, they did really well with their landing phase. The OD and the Sand King uh, really overcome expectations in terms of how th much they were able to accomplish in the landing phase, but it kind of really started feeling weak in the mid-game, the Omni Knight factor. They really, it really was just an Omni Knight game for the first 50 minutes. They didn't have a consistent way to purge it off. Yeah, yeah theoretically, Fortune's End can take care of that, but you can't rely on that. They didn't get a Fusal Blade until the sixth item on OD. He was five-slotted, picks up the, the Fusal Blade, and it's just, it's not enough. Like, I feel like if G had maybe deviated to that as a third item, or if somehow Aloha Dance was able to leave a little bit more farm for King R or Maposhka to pick it up, that would have been allowing them to really better exploit the aggressive positioning that Kaiser and Focus uh, took when they were engaging in fights. But the Omni Knight was able to back them up, 
uh, positive mental attitude and a very aggressive stance gives Broodmothers the early leverage on Team Empire, despite a couple of really good fights, weren't able to bring it back. So uh, that's going to be a, a very, very nice win for Broodmothers. they got to be happy going into Game 2. Absolutely. So with that said, folks, we'll cut to a quick break. When we return, we're going to go into Game Number 2. Remember, these are going to be two game series in the group stage. We'll come back for Game Number 2, Empire versus Broodmothers. I'm Cottle Guy. That's Blaze. We'll be back soon for more Dota action.